The Lost Continent was split into three different themed areas, one of which was Merlinwood, a land of dragons and unicorns which opened the park in 1999. Two iconic dragon statues marked the way to one of the most intense thrill rides in the park. A roller coaster that was never the same after Merlinwood was transformed into the wizarding world of Harry Potter. My name is Sam and welcome back to Expedition Islands of Adventures with the story of Merlinwood and the Jeweling Dragons. This is the castle of Merlinwood Forest, the site of a powerful battle between two fearsome dueling dragons, one with breath of fire and the other ice. Merlinwood was themed around medieval Britain and Ireland and seen as the most thrilling of the Lost Continent subsections. The creation of each land within a land took an immense amount of work, with unique soundtracks created that would be completely different from one another. For Merlinwood, the soundtrack would feature Celtic style music that would sound happy on the outside but was layered on a bed of uneasiness. The whole subsection was inspired by the legends of King Arthur. Within, it was impossible to miss the highly detailed quick service restaurant called the Enchanted Oak Tavern and Alchemy Bar. Located within an enormous hollowed out tree, the restaurant served a medieval feast of smoked chicken, ribs and turkey legs. The Alchemy Bar inside also offered live entertainment and was a great place to relax. The highlight of Merlin's Wood though was the two dragons leading the way into the area's flagship attraction. First known before opening as Merlin's Julian Dragons, it was later shortened to just Julian Dragons. The creation of these huge dragons would be a challenge by itself. Adirondack Scenic Inc, who built a number of sculpture pieces for the land, including the entrance griffins, would take Universal's drawings and build two giant dragons. Each of them were built from a digital image and converted to skeletal structures that could withstand 120 miles per hour winds. Steel frames were welded to the dragons before sprayed foam was carved to create the level of detail required. One would be painted blue, and the other, red. Each of these dragons represented two different elements, Pyrock representing fire and Blizzrock, ice. Locked in an eternal battle, those who ignored Merlin's warnings entered into the ruins of the castle to ride either of these dragons. The thing that separates this coaster from other coasters is there are two coasters in one, completely independent roller coasters, and the close proximity passes are the attraction. The two roller coasters, designed by B&M, featured a combined track length of 6,226 feet, twisting within each other at high speeds. While not the first inverted coasters or the first dueling coasters, when combined they created a unique story and each with a different track layout. Reaching speeds of 60 miles per hour, they would create three near miss elements where the trains look set to collide. To control this, the computers weighed each train upon dispatch and adjusted the lift hill speed to match. The near misses were close really close, 18 inches apart at the closest point, which required the ride to have a maximum height restriction. The story though didn't begin on the ride. It began as soon as you passed through those giant entranceway dragons. The ruined castle had been morphed into the dragon's lair, creating one of the most atmospheric and themed queue lines ever. The rides were expected to be so popular that the queue line was over half a mile long. While some show scenes were cut due to budget constraints, the final version had guests walking down the ruined corridors of the castle. Along the way, you would learn about the story of the castle and the battle of the dragons. An enchanted stained glass window would introduce Merlin in one of the more unique pre-shows of its time. As you travelled deeper into the ruins around you lay the skeletons and remains of fallen knights who had dared enter. One room contained the fates of Pyrox's victims, with molten remains of knights. The next room showed the knights who fell to Blizzrock, frozen in place and covered in large amounts of ice. Eventually, after walking down the tight corridors full of skulls, it was time to choose your fate. Ice 
or fire. This queue set the attraction apart from any other coaster and was a pioneer at the time for a themed entrance. The queue line set up the atmosphere, story, and was as memorable as the ride itself. Once inside these walls, there is no escape but to ride the dragon as they duel in the skies. Both unique coasters were intense, and the dueling element was the highlight, each offering a 2 minute 25 different experience to the other, with trains crafted to look like the dragons themselves. The fire track began by turning left down a 115 foot drop, while the ice began with a 95 foot drop to the right, before fire entered an Immelman followed by an airtime hill, which was the first of the near miss points on the track. At this point the ice track would enter a zero gravity roll bringing the trains close together. Fire headed into a second Immelman before the iconic second near miss, the vertical loop. The ice track had a cobra roll before the vertical loop. Rider's feet were inches apart as both flew up together in sync. Both tracks final near miss element was a corkscrew before Fire took one final corkscrew and both returned to the load station. Each track featured 5 inversions and there was something special about seeing them duel. The whole experience created one of the best dueling roller coasters ever created. Dueling Dragons was heavily used in the marketing of the brand new Island of Adventure and was a huge hit when opening. That long queue line was required as it had one of the longest lines in the park on opening day. One year after the park had opened, an additional ride was added to Merlinwood with the Flying Unicorn, the first new ride to debut after the park's grand opening. Taking place inside an enchanted forest, it told the story of a wizard who found a baby unicorn horn. He used the horn to create this ride. Riding in mechanical unicorn carts, the family coaster travelled through the area reaching speeds of 28 miles per hour. A different wizard though was about to change Merlinwood forever. The first pitch to bring Harry Potter to Universal was all the way back in the year 2000 and had nothing to do with Islands of Adventure at all. Designer Gary Goddard had made a pitch to bring a Harry Potter stage show to Universal Studios Hollywood, one year before the Sorcerer's Stone movie had even released. Another plan was in the works though and that was a Harry Potter land at Islands of Adventure. Potter was planned to move into the existing Merlinwood area. Not as a replacement though, but as an overlay. The Enchanted Oak Tavern would remain with a small reef theme, merchandise shops would open to sell Harry Potter themed attire, the Flying Unicorn would have been rethemed with Hagrid's hut as a hippogriff, and those giant stone dragons would have been kept at the entranceway to Dueling Dragons. On the northern end of the land, which was once looked for a Van Housen ride, would sit Hogwarts Castle, minus Hogsmeade. Instead, Merlinwood would be demolished for the grander Harry Potter land. The Wizarding World. There's a lot happening right now in the world of Harry Potter. The final book is due out this summer and the, the fifth movie is also coming in July. We're here in Dumbledore's office set at uh, Leaveson Studios, a very special place, to make a very special announcement today. And we, with our partners at Warner Brothers, have been working on a very exciting project of our own. And, and I'm very excited to tell you folks first that we are adding a new dimension to the world of Harry Potter and bringing it to life in an entirely new way. We are creating the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal's Islands of Adventure theme park in Orlando. On May 31st, 2007, Universal, in partnership with Warner Brothers, officially announced the Wizarding World of Harry Potter will be coming to Islands of Adventure. The Enchanted Oak Tavern and surrounding areas were completely demolished and rebuilt from the ground up as the Three Broomsticks and the Hog's Head. Merlinwood was being transformed into Hogsmeade. Dueling Dragons remained open through most of the construction. It closed for a short period in 2010 to add the Harry Potter theme. From June 18th of the same year, it was renamed to Dragon Challenge. The unique Dueling Dragon story and queue line elements were removed, and now you entered into the Triwizard Tournament at the Champions Tent. Inside was the Triwizard Cup, followed by several dark tunnels to the station. No longer ice and fire, the tracks were renamed to the Chinese Fireball or Hungarian Horntail. The unique, foreboding queue line and experience was gone. Dragon Challenge was beginning to now feel more like a generic coaster in a land it did not belong. By 2011, perhaps the biggest loss came when due to two separate incidents of loose items hitting riders on opposite trains, the most serious of which had a guest have to have his eye removed, the Dueling Dragons would never duel again. 
Later, metal detectors would be added and no items at all were allowed on the ride, but the dueling aspect never returned. The experience was a shell of what it once was, and looked increasingly out of place in its well-themed surroundings. Oh, happening today, go ahead, get out there, it's your last chance if you want to ride the Dragon Challenge roller coaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure. Dragon Challenge would become the first major attraction from opening day Islands of Adventure to permanently close, and one of only three B&M coasters in the world to close ever, if you count the first Hulk. It was officially closed on September 4th, 2017. Construction began in early January 2018 on its replacement, and Dragon Challenge was removed. In its place would be a new Harry Potter experience. The world's most spellbinding journey is about to take its wildest turn yet. Prepare to face the Forbidden Forest and join Hagrid to encounter the rarest of magical creatures in the epic new edition to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Only at Universal Orlando Resort. A brand new roller coaster which continues the highly detailed theming of the land surrounding it. Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure. A high speed experience reaching up to 50 miles per hour, taking you through the forbidden forest and ruins outside of Hogwarts Castle. Launching you backwards and forwards with a record breaking 7 launches and dropping you 17 feet through Devil's Snare as Hagrid takes you on an adventure complete with multiple audio animatronics. The Hagrid animatronic is especially lifelike, with 24 different body movements and expressions, even if you do only spend a few seconds with him. Oh now don't you worry about this, I'll see you on there now. Of course none of this will happen when you're actually right in the fight. Uh, meters down in the stables. Might be safer to duplicate the bikes down there for room. Then you can ride them. That's better. Hogsmeade has now been part of Islands of Adventure for longer than Merlinwood ever was. It was a unique subsection of one of the greatest theme lands ever created, and Dueling Dragons offered an experience not found anywhere else. Over the years though, it became less and less of what it was intended to be and the new attraction is an incredible replacement for these once iconic dueling coasters. Interestingly, the flying unicorn was re-themed to Flight of the Hippogriff, like those early plans. The history of Hogsmeade and the wizarding world of Harry Potter is a story for another time as we continue our expedition through the Lost Continent. With the demise of Merlinwood and the Dueling Dragons, Universal removed one of the most unique areas of the original park and left the Lost Continent feeling a little… uh… lost. Merlinwood is no more, but one of the most unique theme park lands ever created was replaced with another land that would spark the beginning of increasingly immersive lands and experiences. As long as they now have an IP attached to them of course. As for Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, the queue line would find its third iteration. The second half still consists of long tunnels mostly unchanged from Dragon Challenge, the place skulls used to cover the walls. The first half though was completely updated and an upgrade from the Triwizard setting of the past. Rooms now are covered in empty cages of magical creatures and unhatched eggs. A pre-show welcomes you with Arthur Weasley setting up the attraction, but one thing stands out. On the wall sits a drawing titled The Dueling Club, with of course, a red and blue dragon. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Islands of Adventure. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Do you think Hagrid's motorbike adventure is a worthy replacement for Dragon Challenge? Let me know in the comments below. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming expeditions and a special thank you to our patrons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time.